Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at the second of the golden functions, and that is pick. These golden functions are functions that we've used in Zim that the rest of the world can use even outside of Zim. So, uh, let's uh, take a look now at what pick is all about. Here we are. We can make uh, pick is a way to pass in delayed parameters, delayed dynamic parameters, things like um, a random choice or a series of things or something based on a function. We can pass that into uh, a function or a class and have the function or the class decide what to do. Pick, in other words. Let's uh, let's have a look at the code and see what that's all about. We'll reduce that down. And here we are in pick. For instance, if we wanted to tile an object, we might make a new tile. And normally when we tile something, we pass in the object, such as a new rectangle, a rectangle. Well, let's use a circle. You can see it right away. And then we would say how many columns. So we can do something like nine. How many rows? We might do three. There is spacing as well, five and five, for instance. Um, and then let's center that dot center. Check it out. This, these will be a whole bunch of black circles. Oh, and that opened up a new tab. Uh, refresh was what I was looking for, controller. There we have tiled a bunch of circles. Now, if we wanted to tile either circles or rectangles, um, e from the outside of the function, you could have roll a random number, and if that random number is greater than 0.5, then do a circle. If it's, if it's not, then do a square or a rectangle. But then when you pass the answer of that in to the tile, <laughs> it would just do a whole bunch of squares or it would do a whole bunch of circles. It wouldn't actually do random ones. So what we've developed in Zim is a system uh, that allows us to do that. So for instance, if we pass in a, the object, the circle, or a new rectangle, oops, round brackets in there, if we put them in an array, then uh, the, the function itself, a tile, the class, will see them coming in as an array and say, oh, that's a, a pick object, a pick, pick object literal. That means I need to choose from that, and I, it will randomly choose from the things in the array. So we can put any number of shapes in there, and then we get this. So I'll refresh again. So now what's happening is the tile is picking from that. That's not always what you want. Perhaps you want a series of things. So Zim also, the pick object can also be set up as a series. So a series looks like the word series. Uh, round brackets. Series is really just a function that returns these things in order. So it will go rectangle, circle, rectangle, circle, rectangle, circle, like so. And then we arrive at this. Rectangle, circle, rectangle, circle, rectangle, circle. Cool, huh? So that's a series. The pick can also handle a range. So the range looks like a squiggly bracket, an object with a min and a max. And then it will pick between a min and a max, which doesn't apply here, uh, but it might apply for things like the radius of the circle or um, the width of the, the rectangle within a min and a max. So we could do that too. Um, and then also a function. Uh, but if you don't pass in anything, did you notice when we tiled the rectangle to start, uh, pick just sort of passes it through. It filters it through and says, hey, that's that's not a square brackets. It's not squiggly brackets. It's not a function. Therefore, just pass it on through as a value. So that's what pick is. And if we want to make this look a bit more artistic, we can drop the alpha down on that. Oh, yes. And we could even apply some style to it like that. So this is style. Here we are using pick again. 
uh, take a look. We're saying the color of everything that we make, <laughs> which is why we've turned the style off after. The color of everything that we make will be any one of these colors. Now, a delay pick, true, it, it's, it will say style. Please don't answer this as a style. If we answered it as a style, it would apply any one of these colors to all the rectangles and circles made sort of thing. Uh, actually, I think what it does is it applies it to the first rectangle, then it will pick a different one for the circle, uh, but those two get passed in as uh, and then cloned, so we won't notice a difference. What is happening here when we say delay pick, which you don't always need to do, what delay pick does is it says styles, uh, pass it in as a, um, as a pick object, pass it in as the array still. Don't try and figure out what the answer is. It's very happy. It's very happy. It's very happy. We are very happy to have um, pick in styles as well. It it means that we can style something, and every time uh, something is made, say a circle, if you style circles, you can also style specifically circles or groups, just you know, like CSS. Um, if you style all circles with a series of things, you can make them go consecutively smaller or something like that, or uh, be certain colors or be at certain places. So you can, with styles, make circles into a grid or into um, you know a tile as, as well. As a matter of fact, without even using tile. So pick is used with that kind of stuff as well. Here's what that art looks like. What do you think? Cool. So isn't that great? Uh, that's pick. And you can do that too. So here's some examples in non-Zim. Uh, why don't we just open this up and take a look rather than typing them all out. These are the different uh, ways that we can do picks. So if this is your function here, uh, what pick has is a thing called choose. So we're passing in a, a certain size, and that could be a number 10. Or the size could be a range, or it could be random. So we're going to take a look at this down below. But whatever we pass in its size, we'll store s as the choice. So size goes in here, and pick has a static method that will choose from whatever that is. So you need to bring in pick, which we have done here, like so. So you'd have to go off to GitHub, grab pick, bring in pick, and then you will have access to, where'd it go? You'll have access to pick.choose. And this is what you do inside your function. So inside of tile, zim tile, we have a pick. And as a matter of fact, uh, inside of many things, in, inside of animate, we've got picks. A any properties can be passed in and then and then picked within animate, and so forth. And, and various other things like like uh, particle emitters. Every time you emit a particle, you don't want it to be the same one. So picks are used inside of that as well. So I would say in about a quarter of the functions, we've provided access to picks for this dynamic parameter arrangement. Yeah, very powerful. Very, very powerful. So now we're saying console.log, the size picked is s right here. So whatever was picked, and here we are picking something. So, uh, oh, these are different ways that we can, can handle this. Uh, we could make a new pick object. So that's what we could do and pass in the min and the max into that new pick op object. And here we are console.logging pick from min and max class. So that's the longest way of doing it. That's uh, the real pick object. And we are now saying test and we're passing that pick object into it. So let's see what this brings up. We refresh here. We have 12 to see the console. And here it is, pick from min max class. Size picked is 18.95. And if we refresh, <laughs> size picked is 16. Now that's the long way of doing it. You can also pass in a pick literal, so you don't have to make a new pick object like that. We could have just said test between a min and a max. So that's what we term the pick literal. So that would also work. Shall we see? 
refresh here. Scroll around up. 16.4. I don't know if that changed. We had 16 something before. There's 11. So that's also working within that range. Okay. Now here we've got uh, a test where we're picking randomly between 1, 2, and 3. So pick from an array little rand and there we picked two and if we refresh here we pick two again and if we refresh here <laughs> we picked one this time here's one being picked it's easier to see him the next thing we did was a series now remember this is this is your this is your code. This is your function test that you can do. So you can use this as well. And here, now we're passing in a series. Oh, uh, I think a series comes from Zim, but uh, we have put it into pick. Let's take a pop it. <laughs> peek and pick. Pop in and take a peek a bit. Pick. And uh, what do we have? So some information about pick. And there's pick itself. Here is pick dot series. So if you want to pass in a series and there's pick dot rand, pick dot choose. Okay, so we have not made series just available as a global function. So that, that comes from the Zim series. In other words, it's, it'd have to be pick dot series. There you go. So we're passing in a pick dot series, or we're creating a pick dot series, and then as we loop, we loop ten times. That's a Zim loop. You have to just use a for loop if you're not using Zim. But we're looping ten times. We're running the function each time it knows to look at that series, and therefore it'll say one, two, three, one, two, three for those ten, ten times. And is that what we see here? Pick from a series one. Two, three, one, two, three, and there you have a series. Cool. So once again, you can come to uh, you can come to our GitHub at Danzen and uh, grab the pick code from that. I'll put the link as well down below. And this has been uh, a Zim Explore. And I am Dr. Abstract. Come on into zimjs.com slash slack and you can hang out with us, ask anything uh, about this, see more examples. We'd love to see you there, zimjs.com slash slack. Have a great day. Ciao.